When you build something in Satisfactory, you often use the same construction materials. While centralized personal storage covers this need to some degree, running between containers to get assortment of same five materials gets old pretty fast. And if you want to automate separate storage container for most commonly used materials, this video is for you. In this video, I would glance over what type of personal storage you will need first, and then I will explain pre-sorted storage containers. On the surface, sorting items can be easy, but there are definitely some challenges like different stack sizes of building materials and completely no correlation of belt capacity with these stack sizes. As usual, there are timestamps under this video as well as extra schematics for your personal use in the community tab of this channel. I'm Foxy Shanks, and without further ado, let's go for the first chapter. There are several ways how you can create personal storage area in Satisfactory. The most simple solution is just to haul items from production lines into several storage containers, but this becomes dreadful really fast and some level of automation follows that stage. There are two main ways to create centralized automated storage area. First way requires a bit of extra space outside of your storage containers. In this particular example, every single production line fits into separate belt and corresponding storage container. This type of storage organization can be completely done without smart splitters. But as soon as you add smart splitters into your factory, you are opening way more options. For example, majority of complex items like heavy modular frames, motors and computers produced in small batches compared to throughput of your belts. So a single belt can easily hold up several production lines of complex items and materials. And by simply chaining smart splitters on storage containers, you can save a lot of space unlike on the first version of personal storage. But there's huge disadvantage to this approach to your personal storage. If production of one item on your belt is higher than others, then it will jam your belt. This will stop flow of other materials with lower production rates. For that reason, every belt line that uses smart splitter to sort items need the overflow splitter in the end. And this overflow splitter simply feed awesome sync with excess materials. And while you save quite a bit of space, this means that the amount of energy involved in your personal storage probably would be higher than with simple one belt, one container approach. Also, outside of increased energy consumption, you will not be able to actually efficiently sort your items for pre-sorted containers. So smarter is not always the better. To create resorted storage containers, you will need to use first and more simple approach to your personal storage. To create pre-sorted storage containers, you will need several things. You will need at least Mark III belts, you will need industrial storage containers, and you will need smart splitters and awesome sync. This is at least tier 4, milestone 4 of your game progression. You will need step 10 in Caterium Research 3 for your smart splitters as well. This is how backend of pre-sorted storage containers looks like. And yes, this looks dreadful. But it actually works like a charm. So what are happening here? Let's start with some fifth grade algebra. For my personal pre-sorted containers, I need iron plates, iron rods, cables, wires, steel beams and steel pipes. And suddenly we have several issues. Stack sizes for these items are 500, 200 and 100. So, fitting these items on the same type of belt into one container will result in constant oscillation. One item will create more stacks than other, and while others will be limited to one, pre-sorted system will simply not work as intended. Remember that we want assortment of full stacks, not chaotic stockpile of unwieldy size. Also, we want to fill only part of container. As a result, other issue is the size of storage container. We want to refill your inventory with simple click of grab all button in container. And this is actually completely possible if you block storage container cells with items that you do not commonly use in your inventory. You leave enough space for exact number of stacks and fill container with something like biomass. Then you press grab all button on container when you take your pre-sorted items. Then you wait several seconds for your material stacks start to fill container. And after that you press ctrl mouse button 1 on biomass stacks that were transferred into your inventory. And as a result, with two simple clicks, you got your items and then made container operational for future use. But obviously we still have our mathematical challenge to solve. Stack sizes of 500, 200 and 100 do not correspond with any of the belt types with throughput of 60, 120, 270, 480 and of course 720. You need to force fill ratio equal to 1 to 5 for every stack size to make even fill ratio of storage container. This means that stack size of 500 need to fill at rate of 100 items per minute, stack size of 200 need to fill at rate of 40 items per minute, and stack size of 100 need to fill at rate of 20 items per minute. 
So let's actually crack this puzzle. To start you will need to use industrial storage container to create buffer between your pre-sorted container and your production lines. Your production lines can have different output ratios and industrial storage container is the perfect buffer that actually have several inputs and outputs. Big disclaimer here that to sort efficiently in the long time frames, you will need minimal production rate of 60 items per minute for every item with stack size of 100 and 200, and for the stack size of 500 you will need 120 items per minute. If your production rate is lower, your buffer will eventually dry up. On the other hand, this is not concrete requirement and sorting process can be turned on and off. In this case, you only need big enough buffer for the time when you actually reuse your pre-sorted storage container. Once you have your buffer in place, you take one of the outputs and place the belt with capacity of 60 or 120 items per minute. For stack sizes of 100 and 200, you will need to use Mark 1 belt. And for the stack sizes of 500, you will need to use Mark 2 belt. Remember that we are trying to achieve fill ratio of 1 to 5. At the moment we have belts with output of 60 and 120, but we need output of 20, 40 and 100. We will use simple splitters and mergers to create exact ratios. For output of 20 we will need to divide Mark 1 belt with 60 items per minute into 3 separate lines with Mark 1 belts. These are 3 lines with 20 items per minute. So you simply take one line to final storage container and merge two other lines into a waste line. For output of 40 you will need to divide Mark 1 belt with 60 items per minute into three separate lines with Mark 1 belts. Then you take two lines and merge them together for one line to final storage container. Third line is your waste line. For output of 100 you will need to divide Mark 2 belt with 120 items per minute into two separate lines with Mark 1 belts. Then you divide one of the 60 lines into output of 40 and 20 just like it was done previously. Then you merge your second 60 line with 40 line for final storage container. 20 line obviously goes to waste. So we have our balanced outputs for different stack sizes and exact ratios of 1 to 5. With these ratios we finally can start to do our automation. So in the next chapter I will cover several big issues that can prevent reliable and consistent sorting system. First, we need to account for our waste lines. While we created perfect ratios with simple splitters, these ratios will only last while your waste lines do not jam. And as soon as your waste line jam, your ratios will stop working and belts will oversaturate with items from the waste lines. For that reason, it is really important to have awesome sync in the end of the waste line. Also, you probably want to merge several waste lines and you need to account for number of items merged. For that reason, something with extra capacity like Mark 4 or Mark 5 belts is advised. Also, there is a small opportunity here to reduce overall input of pre-sorted system. You can use waistline as extra input source for your buffer. But once again, to avoid belt jamming, you will need to set up extra smart splitter with overflow setting into your awesome sync. Next really important step in sorting automation is how you merge your pre-sorted lines. It is really easy to overthink this step. But in reality, you just need to use your belt with higher capacity on output of your mergers. You do not need to have same length of the belts or do something like load balancing. Given enough time, system will come to equilibrium even with different belt length for input items. And this is really important notion. As soon as your pre-sorted storage container is filled, your belt lines will oversaturate and jam. And since we are handling outputs of 20, 40 and 100 items per minute, this saturation will not be equal if you have different length of the input belts. For that reason, when you take items from your pre-sorted storage container, your sorted output will oscillate. To avoid that, you'll need to maintain constant load on your sorting system. And this is really easy to do with simple overflow of smart splitter before input of your pre-sorted storage container. And once again, like previously, you need to fit an awesome sync with overflow of items. And once again, you can redirect this flow to input of your buffers. But since we are talking about the belt with assortment of different items, I find that creation of another sorting system just to refund your items is just kinda overkill. So these are pretty much all steps for creation of your pre-sorted storage container. To operate your pre-sorted storage, you simply press grab all button on container, then wait several seconds for sorting system to create new stacks inside storage container and then you transfer your limiter items back into the storage container with control plus mouse button one click. 
In my case, I'm using biomass as my limiter. And speaking of biomass, there is another small and quirky way to automate your personal storage and make your factory even more efficient and awesome. When you do something like hard drive hunting or simply explore, you often find your inventory filled with assortment of items like leaves, wood, mycelia, flower petals and of course slugs. All of these items can be processed into something more useful. Creating factory that produce color cartridges, power shards, filters, fabric, biofuel with of course biomass is pretty simple. But running between all these production lines is really annoying. For that reason creating one dump container that can handle and sort everything in place is a really tempting opportunity. But there are several interesting obstacles to overcome when you automate this system. First you need to account that several slugs is way less to process than several thousand leaves. So taking one belt and splitting it up with smart splitters will simply jump the whole system. Your whole factory would be defined by processing rate of the biggest bulk item like leaves. To avoid this, you will need to create storage container buffers after your smart splitters sorting. This way you will allow smaller bulk items to be processed with the higher bulk items at the same time. Also you will need to have one extra buffer in place for your fabric production. Biomass can be produced in numerous ways. Alien carapace and alien organs can be excellent source of biomass just like leaves and wood. Biomass is required for production of fabric. Another component is mycelia. But this last component is usually less abundant than biomass. And you do not want majority of your biomass go back to your personal storage container by passing your fabric production line when you have no mycelia. This is why creating another buffer before fabric production line is really important. This way you will have enough biomass on the standby for that fabric production. Another note on biomass production that you probably want to take one of your input sources and turn it into biofuel. In my case I prefer to use wood source for creation of biofuel. Next important note is to create overflow valve with a smart splitter and awesome sink. While you can add numerous warning signs into your bio waste sorting container, it is better to be safe than sorry. If you put anything that do not work with your bio waste factory into the container, you will just jump the whole system. This is why adding smart splitter that handle any non-specified item in the end is so important. And since we already have buffers in place, we will never waste any of our bio waste items. Just make sure that your buffers are bigger than your storage container input. And of course, as usual, all schematics that I use in this video are in the community tab of this channel. And don't forget to give this video a like. And as always, thank you for watching and of course, have a satisfactory day.